Hubert, followed by his faithful friends, continued up to the very top of the magical mountain of Cube. When he looked down, all the cubes had changed colors. Hubert was proud of himself. The end. Oh, I didn't see you there. Thanks for tuning in today. This is the fourth episode of Tales from a Retro Gamer. Today I'm going to talk about Korgs. I just got back from Columbus, Ohio. Korgs stands for Columbus, Ohio, Ohio Retro Gaming Society. And it's a passionate group on Facebook where they're really passionate about video games. It's a Ohio, apparently Columbus, Ohio is a hotbed of retro gaming. Not necessarily with game companies or big conventions and everything, but the community is really uh, devoted to video games. And you can tell this by if you attend Korgs. I just got back, had a great time. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit today. So a couple of years ago, um, I was... Gary Carnuche, who runs, or Carnuche, I'm not really sure how you pronounce his name, great guy, Gary for short, he contacted me and asked if I wanted to be a guest at his show, Korg's, and he said it's a one-day show, it's kind of medium to large, you know, small to medium-sized show, just your average gaming convention size-wise, and it's a one-day show, and I considered it, I thought, well, that's, that's really nice to be invited out as a guest, that's always a plus, always a good time, but I didn't know if I wanted to spend a whole weekend and an entire plane trip and all that kind of stuff going to a small to medium one day show. Well, I spoke to Michael Thomason who had done the show before. He's a good friend of mine. And he said, book sales are great at Korg's. You really need to go. And so I told Gary, I'm in, count me in. It'll be a great time. And I figured even if I didn't make a ton of money or sell a bunch of books, at least I'd have a good time. Friends were gonna be there. Gary rolled out the red carpet. So I went, it was awesome. That was a year ago. So I went again this year. Once again, book sales were really good. Had an absolute blast. So the plane ride Friday, I got there Friday afternoon, smooth plane ride. Uh, the next, the lady next uh, to me on the plane noticed my Space Invaders t-shirt. And so I talked to her a little bit. She's in her 40s, so we talked a little bit about video games. And she said she grew up playing Pong and loved that. And her son has an Xbox One and really gets into that. So I told her about the show. She was headed, she was back, to, she lives in Hilliard, which is right outside of Columbus, is where the, Hilliard is actually where the show is, right outside of Columbus. And she said she would tell him about it. Don't know if they made it to the show or not. I never saw him. But uh, anyway, so smooth plane ride. Made it to the airport. And a guy named Van Rose, really cool guy. He, he volunteers for Korgs. He helps Gary out a lot. What he did was he uh, hauled me around all over town all weekend long. Me and John Lester, another guest, uh, YouTuber, Gamester81. As you can see by my shirt, I'm wearing my Gamester shirt, which I got in the 1990s, so I'm not, I'm not copying John, but it's more of an homage. Anyway, so I dragged this out, this dusty old shirt out of the closet to, to sort of talk about John today. Anyhow, so when I got to the hotel, really super nice hotel, Van picked me up at the airport, took me to the hotel, very cool, and so Van said he'd be back later if I wanted to go somewhere, and so I said, sure. So I chilled out at the hotel for a little while, got some rest. Van came back about an hour and a half later, and if you go to Ohio, Columbus area, Cleveland, whatever, go to Skyline Chili. Really, really good. Now, I live in Texas. Someone would say, why would you go to Ohio and have chili? Well, it's much different than Texas chili. It's, it's, it, some people say the secret ingredient is cinnamon, which sounds weird. Whatever it is, it works great. I like the, what they call their five-way. It's a big plate of spaghetti, chili, beans, onions, and just tons of shredded cheese on top. Super good. So we went there, then we went to Half Price Books. Uh, Van just said, where do you wanna go? We'll go. We hung out, had a great time. Went to Half Price Books, unfortunately, very rare. I didn't find a thing. I usually find some stuff maybe for myself or to resell or whatever. Walked out empty handed. Still, it was super cool that he was willing to take me there. So later that night, John Lester, Game Straighty One, real popular YouTuber, he uh, showed up and we were rooming together. Uh, Gary, uh, the guy that runs the show, had set us up in this really nice hotel. So John shows up. He's been a friend of the family for a few years now. Uh, when we were going through Phoenix a couple of years ago, we made sure to stop off and see John and have lunch with him and everything. Super cool guy. One of the nicest, most humble YouTubers I know that has a really large following. Super guy. And so we hung out, talked, caught up on you know all the retro gaming gossip and whatnot and had a blast. And um, the next morning, got up early. Van is right there out front. He took us to the show. We got there about 45 minutes early. I like when I'm doing a show, even if I'm already set up, I like to get there early, kind of talk to people in line, maybe hand out a few business cards, 
check out the vendor's room, see if there's any early bird deals or anything like that, and just kind of talk to people I hadn't seen in a while. Just kind of scope out the joint. Um, setup was pretty easy this time because I, I just brought books. I didn't bring a ton of merchandise or anything. I just set up books and a little signage. And, you know, so, you know, 15, 20, 30 minutes before the show, there was already a, line, a long line out the front door. And so that's always an encouraging sign. There was a good crowd this year. And uh, once again, I sold a lot of books. It's a really good show for book sales, like I had mentioned earlier. Once again, it was this year. Now, I didn't quite sell quite as many books as last year. Uh, one reason is, is because two other authors were there. My good friends, Michael Thomason, who I mentioned earlier that, recommend, earlier that recommended the show, and Leonard Herman. Now, Michael Thomason wrote Downright Bizarre Games, which is a really cool and interesting book with a lot of cool stories and, and just interesting uh, video game history about some of the stranger commercials and other bizarre elements of the industry. Also there was Leonard Herman. Now Leonard, Leonard Herman is very well known among video game journalists and, and people like that, writers, because he wrote the very first um, video game history book way back in the 90s. The first one that was, you know, a full history of the industry that was written for you know adults an actual you know legitimate history book you know covering the entire industry way back when and it was called Phoenix the fall and rise of video games well the latest edition is Phoenix 4 which he had at the show and he was happy with sales Michael Thomason was happy happy with sales it was awesome John Lester was on uh, the little they had the guests up on the stage and um, customers would come out and talk to us and John was obviously very busy, really popular on YouTube, so he had you know a lot of people coming up, getting photos made with him and stuff. And we just had an excellent time at the show. It's a pretty low-key show. There's no panels, so there's none of that pressure. There's no um, uh, you know big loud bands or anything. It's just sort of a low-key show with a really good vendors room and people hanging out and talking. Now there was music, which I actually liked. It wasn't. I actually like classic rock better than chiptune music or 8-bit music or whatever you want to call it. I don't dislike that music, but I prefer the stuff I grew up with, you know, 70s and 80s rock. And they had uh, music playing all day, but it was just at the right level where it didn't bug you, but you weren't, couldn't just barely hear it. it. It hit that sweet spot. And Gary that runs the place is a big music fan, so he knew exactly what he was doing. Now, strangely enough, this entire trip, I didn't buy a single thing. half price books, I struck out. There was tons of stuff I saw at Korg's I would have liked to have gotten, including a bunch of boxed Vectrex stuff. I love the Vectrex, the tabletop ve uh, vector graphics system, consoles, cartridges, you name it. It was, it was a really well-stocked show vendor-wise. So I could have easily spent hundreds of dollars, but I did not. So once the show was over, uh, of course, we, had, we packed up, did all our stuff. We made a beeline back to Skyline. We're in the area. Sorry, we had to go again. It was excellent. After that, we all went to a, they suggested going to a barcade. And I was like, that's sure, why not? And I just expected maybe just, you know, a bar with some craft beers and maybe a row of arcade games, you know, maybe a pinball machine or two. And I thought, that sounds okay, whatever, sure, I'll just go along. It'll be, I'm sure it'll be fun. I'll kick back a beer or whatever. Well, it turns out this place we went to, it's called 16-bit, and it's got an adjoining arcade called Pins. So they've got pinball machines and arcade games. The arcades were all set up on free play and there's no admission fee. And I was stuffed from Skyline so I really didn't want anything to drink or anything. So I just went in, got some water, and just played the heck out of uh, Jungle Hunt. Very cool game. They had Kangaroo where you're, you know, you hop the kangaroo around, climb the ladders, you got the boxing gloves. Classic game. Played some Space Invaders, some Asteroids. Awesome stuff. A lot of classic games. They had some newer stuff too. Played a little pinball. Pinballs cost, you know, you had to put quarters in the pinball machines and the air hockey and stuff like that, but we had an incredible time. Played some foosball, four-player foosball, always a great time. Super cool arcade. It was massive and it was open air, so much different than what I was expecting. It was a blast. We had, we had just an incredibly great time, so much fun. So after that, we were pretty tired, so everybody went their separate ways. Once again, Van Rose, the superhero, he drove us all the way back to our, our hotel. It was still cool talking to John, great talking to Van. And um, I'm, I talked to Gary and he wants to have us out again next year, me and John and Leonard and Michael. Once again, he wants to have us out ne at next year's show. And if you know everything works out with my schedule, I plan on going again, because it's a super cool show with a lot of really uh, friendly and, and fun customers that 
you know that know that know their stuff, that know a lot about retro gaming. They'll just come up to your table and talk about you know whether it's their favorite game or growing up playing a particular game or or just getting an autographed book or whatever. So it was it was awesome. It was a, it was a great show, and I I definitely look forward to going again next year. One thing about this show, Korgs, their sort of mascot, if you will, or their their cover art is Cubert. Now Cubert was one of my favorite games growing up. Absolutely loved Cubert. I remember uh, one night, see Putt Putt Golfing Games back in the 80s, some of them were open 24 7. And even during school times at, at certain weeks of the year. And a friend of mine one night, I was a junior in high school. And a good friend of mine, uh, a friend of mine that had a ColecoVision that, that we would play uh, the same year I got mine, he came over one night around 11, 11 30 after my parents had got to, gone to bed. And he picked me up. We had planned this at school earlier in the day. It was a school night. It was like a Tuesday night or something. He came over, picked me up, and I snuck out of the house after my parents were asleep. Sorry, Mom. And we went to putt putt golfing games, played all night long, and I definitely remember playing some Cubert that night. And the reason I'm bringing up Cubert is because of the Korg's uh, logo. Plus, I saw at the at the Korg show, I saw probably the coolest mashup I've ever seen. It was a T-shirt this guy had on a customer that came up. Cubaca. So it was Cubert as as Chewbacca or vice versa, you know, hopping around the cubes with the Star Wars enemies combined with Cubert. Super cool. And strangely enough, it seemed to be a Cubert themed weekend. Not only that, on the way home. So a few months ago, Warren Davis, the creator of Cubert, he messaged me on Facebook. I had met him a couple years ago at a video game show. And he messaged me a few months ago telling me he was working on his autobiography and what I'd like to look at, you know, just the first draft to see, you know, maybe I could make some suggestions, maybe I could make some, I'm, I'm a writer by trade, so maybe I could make, you know, some, point out some grammatical mistakes or whatever. Very well written book, what I've read so far. I'm about 100 pages in, very well written. I didn't, you know, I, don't, I didn't recommend a ton of changes, but I made some recommendations here and there. Well, I continued reading the book on the, you know, the early draft on the plane on the way home. And it didn't occur to me till I was almost home that here's another Cubert tie-in. Obviously, Warren Davis, the creator of Cubert, super cool guy. Warren Davis, really nice guy, very down to earth, very interesting, very intelligent, and a creator of an absolutely iconic game, Cubert. I mean, you saw it in Wreck It Ralph uh, back in the day. There was tons of Cubert merchandise. And at some point, I may do a Cubert episode because I knew this kid in high school named Gilbert DeLuna that was insane on Cubert, best Cubert player I've ever seen at least back then before, you know, I met some of these world record breakers, you know, at recent shows and stuff. Anyhow, Cubert is a story for another day, and I'm sure I'll be talking more about Warren Davis's uh, autobiography whenever it comes out, and um, look forward to reading the whole thing. Anyway, Korgs was awesome. It was great seeing my friends there. Book sales were spectacular. Got a few, uh, a few new uh, YouTube subscribers, so that's always a plus. Speaking of subscribers, if you could subscribe to the channel, Click thumbs up on this episode or any other episodes you enjoyed. Um, hopefully you like this one. Hope you'll tune in next week. I'm putting out a new episode every Tuesday at 2 p.m. CST. And I'll throw in a little uh, bonus episode here and there. But right now we're on a weekly schedule. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing. Peace out.